Hi there, this is Bruno from SpainGuru.es, your portal and community for Spanish immigration. And today we're gonna talk about how to get long-term EU residency in Spain step by step. This article was written by Megan Gardner. And here it goes. After being an auxiliar for one year and working for nearly five, both on contract and as a freelancer, I finally reached eligibility to apply for a sweet long-term visa. In this article, I share my experience in successfully applying for Residencia de Larga Duración, EU. If you've been living and working in Spain for five years and you're not European, then you may be eligible to apply for this type of residency. But it may not be your only or best option. Learn about alternatives in our previous article on permanent and long-term residency options in Spain. We also made a video about it. Keep in mind that working applies to those either on contract at the company, cuenta ajena, or working for themselves on a freelance visa, which is cuenta propia. Any time spent on, wor on working on a student visa, I'm looking at you, auxiliares de conversación, counts for 50% time-wise. So if you've only ever been an auxiliar de conversación, you have to be an auxiliar for 10 years to be eligible for this type of residence. Also keep in mind that you must have physically been in Spain most of that time. Extended time outside the country can impact your eligibility. Check the link in the article and in the link of the video uh, and video description below. The process. Luckily, the process for applying for this type of residency is pretty straightforward if you meet the requirements. And here's what you need to do. First, make an appointment at a registro público. Two, get your documents in order. Three, submit at your appointment. Four, wait up to three months. Let's look at each of those steps in detail. First, make an appointment at a registro público. The system for making an appointment at a registro público is different from making an appointment, for example, at Aluche, which is Extranjería in Madrid. This is because the office in Aluche is specifically for Extranjería, or foreigner's office. While a registro público is simply an office where any person in Spain, citizen or not, can go to submit documentation for many different bureaucratic processes. They simply scan your documents and they send them to a different office for processing, presumably to reduce traffic at those key offices, like the foreigner's office. To make this appointment, you can visit the web page on the Comunidad de Madrid site. As far as I know, you can make it for any of the offices labeled Oficina de Registro, regardless of their area of specialty. Education, environment, justice. I always go to either the one on Calle Gran Vía number 3 or the one at Plaza de Chamberí 8 because they're both central and quite nice. However, any of them should work. Once you access this website, just click on Acceder, prove you're not a robot, click Solicitar Cita or request an appointment. You can select any of the office types, as I said above. For the Gran Vía office, you'll have to select one, Consejería de Presidencia, Justicia e Interior Oficina 360. Then, choose the Gran Vía office and the service type is Registro de Documentación. If you're only submitting documents for one process, you can put one for Número de Registros. Choose your time and date and you're good to go. Second, get your documents in order. If you're at this point in your journey in Spain, you've surely applied for other visa types. The documentation needed for this application is no different. You can find the official list of documents required on the government page here. And they include a good old-fashioned X11 application form, a good old-fashioned TASA or FII, modelo 790 código 052 epígrafe 2.6, full copy of your passport and bring the original to the appointment, proof you can support yourself economically, this is kept vague, but I personally used a bank statement, simply how much I had in my account, plus my IRPF file, summary of annual income taxes paid. And then, proof you have health insurance. This doesn't have to be private. I was a freelancer when I applied, so I just included proof I was in the Spanish health system. 
a photocopy of my healthcare card and a document from Social Security saying I had the right to access healthcare in Spain. However, if you need a private health insurance, Spain Guru recommends uh, this one, which you can find the link in the description. So don't stress too much about proving that you have lots of money. The Spanish government just wants to make sure you are not at risk of going bankrupt. Just show them records of how much you paid in taxes or any other proof or of a stable income and you should be fine. Number three, submit at your appointment. This was the easiest tramite of all time, seriously. It's great to submit at the registro because A, they don't ask you questions, they just submit the documents and B, they tend to be very kind, as opposed to my experience at the foreigner's offices, like Aluche. I just prepared all my documents and a copy of each, and I was in and out in five minutes. They will give you a recibo de registro de documentación, which is a receipt that they received the uh, documents that you just handed in. This just shows you that you submitted the documents, but not necessarily that the application has been filled. It hasn't been yet. This means you don't have a numero de expediente yet. So how do you get it? It's the same place where you can check the status of your application. Check out the information sobre el estado del expediente de extranjería and login with either your clave PIN or your information, NIE, birthday, and the day you applied. Note, the day you applied might be in the system as one or two days after you dropped off your paperwork at the registro. So you may have to play around with the date. Sometimes you need to be creative here to win over the bureaucracy in Spain. Number four, wait up to three months. And also you have to be patient. You're done. The Spanish government has three months to give you your resolution. In my case, it took about six weeks to get approved. The website mentioned above will be updated first, but it's only to inform you of the status of the application and cannot be used to apply for your TA. However, soon after, you'll receive the official physical letter that says Resultado Favorable in the mail. You'll need to the letter to apply for your shiny new TA or Tarjeta de Identificación de Extranjero. Next steps. If you've been working in Spain for this many years, you know this next step like the back of your hand. With the Resultado Favorable paper in hand, it's time to make an appointment to get your TA. This will hopefully be the last time you have to do this for five years. Remember, of course, to bring your official letter with the Resultado Favorable resolution in it. And that's it. You're done. Good luck on your journey to becoming a resident of Europe. I hope it was helpful. For more information on the requirements for this type of residency, check out our blog post linked in the article about long-term residency options, which also compares this process to other similar ones. And this article was written by Megan Gardner. Megan Gardner is a multilingual co content creator from the US after studying Spanish translation and interpretation and international studies at the Indiana University. She moved to Madrid where she's been working as a copywriter, editor, and translator since 2016. Please keep in mind that all the information provided in this video and article are based on personal experience and internet research and should not be considered legal advice. If you need to contact immigration uh, experts or tax experts or any kind of experts, you will find all the links on spainguru.es for the recommended uh, partners that will help you out with any of the processes. Spainguru also has several Facebook groups. The most important one is this one with nearly 16,000 members. Spain Immigration and Residency Questions, where you can post your questions and get answers from our community members. And one good feature, you can do it anonymously if you don't want to show your name. You can also join a non-lucrative visa Facebook group with more than 500 members. And also we have a digital normal uh, Facebook group. Uh, this uh, visa has not been approved yet, but we hope during 2023 to be approved in Spain. And you can also subscribe to Spanish uh, to Spain Guru's newsletter. We send it on a weekly basis every Monday with the top discussions of our community. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these kind of videos, please subscribe. Please hit the bell button to receive notifications. And please like the video if you like this content. This is Bruno from SpainGuru.es. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.